I'm very excited about this video because we will explore the Nikon D5600, the last model in Nikon's D5000 series which was released in 2016. We'll cover 12 key points and by the end of this video you'll have a clear idea whether this camera is the right choice for you. Even if you're not planning to buy it, you'll find it interesting to see what the D5600 has to offer, especially since this is the last mid-range DSLR Nikon produced. There's no D5700 or D5800. That's why I bought it. I was curious to see what it brought to the table. Let's start with the positive aspects. First pro, good build quality. The D5600 is one of those DSLRs with a rugged construction that also has some elegance. It's a small camera, but the slim grip is long enough for comfortable handling, and all the buttons and dials give a nice tactile feel. Although they are a bit crouched together, you know when you press something and everything is pretty much right there where you need it. On the left side, next to the lens, interestingly, there's a function button that you can use for changing the ISO. We also have the exposure compensation button on the top right side. We need it for toggling between the aperture and shutter speed settings. So even if it has only one control dial, manual mode is easy on this camera. It stays well in the hand, I like how it feels. Good build quality. The second pro is about the USB ports. On the left side, you'll find a port for using a remote, a microphone, great for video shooters, and a USB port. In my opinion, every camera should have these features. On the right side, there's also a mini HDMI port, allowing you to connect the camera to an external monitor. All these ports are protected by small hinged flaps that function like tiny doors, opening and closing smoothly. When shot, they stay securely closed, giving the impression that the camera is weather sealed. Although this camera isn't actually weather sealed, the well-built flaps provide easy access to the ports and are very user-friendly. The third pro is about the fully articulating touchscreen. Nikon made a great choice by including a large 3.2-inch screen on this camera, which is more generous than the 3-inch screens typically found on competing models. This 7% increase in screen size offers a better viewing experience. On top of that, the fully articulating design adds a lot of flexibility, allowing you to easily shoot from waist level, or if you want to vlog, if you want to film yourself, you can easily do that thanks to the screen. Although it is touch sensitive, I don't find myself using the touch feature very often. This might be because Nikon's quick menu isn't as user friendly as Canon's or because you have to pinch the zoom when reviewing photos because double tapping doesn't work. However, having a touch screen is still a great feature. You can use it for changing the autofocus point or even for taking a photo without pressing the shutter button. Fourth Pro, good image quality for photos. When it comes to image quality, the Nikon D5600 delivers good photos with nice dynamic range and color depth. Plus, I noticed that images were clean even at ISO 1600. If I were to judge the color science Nikon uses, it all depends on your taste. Skin tones can look a bit yellowish, which is a bit different from what we get on a Canon camera. A nice feature of the D5600, which I have to mention, is the 14-bit RAW capability, which allows for heavy tweaks in Photoshop. Overall, the 24 megapixel sensor provides solid results for photos. We'll discuss its video capabilities later. The fifth pro has to be about the card compartment and tripod mount placements. When compared to its predecessor, the D5600 has the card compartment on the right side. It is much easier to change the SD card when it's not in the same compartment as the battery. And some more good news, when using a tripod, the battery is also easy to change. Nikon was very thoughtful in placing the tripod mount slightly to the side to avoid any blockages. Since we're here, I want to point out the only undisputed advantage of a DSLR camera when compared to a mirrorless camera, and that is battery life. For example, with the Nikon D5600, you can take 820 photos on a single charge, twice as many as you typically get from a mirrorless camera. The battery that swiftly fits into the small grip is a champion in the shutter count marathon. The 7th Pro Vast Lens Variety The lens is as important as the camera itself. Oftentimes, a person's decision to buy a camera also depends on the available lens options. Fortunately, for Nikon's APS-C sensor DSLRs, there is a large lens variety. In fact, for this camera, there are more than 300 options from which you can choose. You know what this means, right? It means that you can find a lot of lenses at affordable prices. The 8th Pro is about smartphone connectivity and SnapBridge. We do get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC on the D5600, allowing us to connect it to a smartphone. 
With Snapbridge, Nikon's app for downloading photos, you don't have to go to your computer, remove the card and all of that. Afterwards, you can post them on social media if you want. Also, with Snapbridge, we can control the camera, which works great for taking photos. However, I haven't seen an option to control the camera while recording videos. I believe this feature simply doesn't exist for the D5600. Nonetheless, Nikon's app is still very useful. These were the pros. Now let's also see the main cons. There are two of them. First con, short video recording limits. We already know the camera doesn't record in 4K, it only does full HD, but even here there's a recording limit of 20 minutes. It doesn't matter if you choose 24, 25 or 30 frames per second, the camera will stop recording after 20 minutes. Now for slow motion shots, this camera can record at a maximum frame rate of 60, but here the recording limit is 10 minutes. This indicates that the D5600 is more of a photo camera and not a video one. Second con, mediocre video performances in color science and ISO. I'm not saying that this camera takes bad videos, they are nice and sharp. If you have enough light, you can get some good results. However, you might feel the need to adjust the colors if you don't like the Nikon look. In broad daylight, everything seems good, but in low light, the D5600 shows its limitations, with yellowish faded colors and poor ISO performances. While high ISOs look fine for photos, it's not great for video. This Nikon camera was made for photos, not for videos. You could do some vlogging with it, but I wouldn't consider it for heavy video work. I covered the main pros and cons of the D5600, but I haven't covered the focusing aspect. This one fits into the last section of this video, which is pro cons, aspects that are neither good nor bad. Let's begin. When it comes to focusing, this camera comes with 39 face detect AF points that do a decent job. When you're taking photos while looking through the viewfinder, you'll notice that this is quite a capable DSLR for focusing. In live view, the camera's performance is average while moving the focus point using the touchscreen. My main curiosity was face tracking. Vloggers and portrait shooters need it. There's no eye tracking on the D5600, but while moving in front of the camera, I noticed a decent performance. Although it's not great, the camera tracks faces well. I would give it a 7 out of 10 in this department. The second pro con is about the internal microphones. They are positioned near the hot shoe and they are stereo. Of course, these are not professional grade microphones and pick up too much noise in loud environments. However, if you're at home or in a quieter place, they do a decent job, as you can hear. So here I am talking in front of the camera, I'm using the internal microphones of the Nikon D5600. In conclusion, it's a good camera for beginners who are more pretentious and don't want an entry-level camera. An experienced photographer can also get good results with it, but we must remember this is a photo-first camera and not a video camera. For photos, it offers great image quality, 14-bit RAW and decent autofocus. Aspiring vloggers can start with a D5600, but for heavy video work, it's better to choose something from Canon or Sony. So this was Nikon's last DSLR from the D5000 series. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and I'll see you in the next camera review.